Hello everyone. So I welcome to module 22 in the course of UN SDGs. Well, we are going to discuss SDG 14 that is life below water. So, well, one uh, before I begin, you know, one interesting fact, uh, you know, I would like to uh, like inform you guys, like uh, you may be knowing it already. Well, the world has, you know, the earth has two lungs, you know, the one lung, you know, we are all aware of, you know, like trees, you know, forests and the, you know, green uh, surface, you know, all the vegetation which uh, releases, you know, like O2 right which absorbs co2 and uh, you know supplies oxygen to our atmosphere you know our environment there is a second lung also you know and almost 50 50 percent you know like uh, they contribute you know this oxygen to our planet that is you know like a marine plants you know? so inside the ocean you know under you know like under water you know there are you know like several plants and creepers and uh, you know like algae and many you know like a such a vegetation which you know flourishes you know under water that also supplies you know like O2 to our planet. So there are two major lungs you know like you always remember. So it's not that oceans are not any useful or uh, they are just you know like a reservoir of you know like this saline water which we can't use and all of that right. That saline water actually you know with the you know like a, it becomes vapor and comes you know to us as cloud right and uh, it drains in our place right plus you know it supplies uh, oxygen right plus it harbors you know like a more number of uh, you know like a, uh, aquatic animals right from microbial to the you know like a greatest you know like this blue whale what you are seeing here in this picture you know the largest you know like a, a mammal you know on the planet you know so all of this is possible only inside the uh, oceans right under you know like the water surface you know which we usually do not see since you know we are uh, uh, living on the you know like a surface we are uh, you know like animal which are uh, you know we can't live you know like under water well we can go dive you know and then again we have to come back okay we are not the permanent you know inhabitants of uh, you know like underwater world okay so we are not you know like so much aware of it Plus, it is not as clear as you know, like a sky, you know, and on top of us that any time you want and you can see what's what's there, okay, like any bird or anything, right? So oceans are you know little uh, kind of a, it's an uh, uh, you know off-site you know like an environment, off-site world, right? Which harbors you know like equal you know a number of you know like a species, living species, and a lot of minerals and resources, right? Everything. So there is too much you know of uh, information. We know and there is a lot you know yet to be known you know about our oceans right but from SDG perspective why we are discussing because you know that world also is equally important for the planet for the survival of uh, you know, like a planet and its ecological balance okay. So <clears throat> one fact over 3 billion people depend on marine and coastal biodiversity for their livelihood yeah. So we were just discussing about you know like a water and you know like it's uh, you know like marine animals. But even if we do not you know like live under water you know, but we depend on it. You know, you see this fact. You know, like out of uh, you know like eight billions, you know, three billion people, you know, lump sum, you know, depend on oceans for their livelihood. Okay, and in that too. Like very importantly, you know, like a point is put up over here, the biodiversity, the coastal biodiversity, right, marine and coastal biodiversity, right. So what it means, you know, we will uh, discuss in subsequent uh, lectures. So why we are discussing, okay, why do we need it? What is the goal with this SDG? To conserve and sustainably use the world's ocean, seas and marine resources. So that we are not uh, end up, you know, like a destroying in the previous uh, you know like uh, modules we saw like how you know plastic or other uh, you know like a waste is eventually landing inside you know like the oceans in the oceans and it is floating here and there it's going uh, getting deposited uh, at the bottom of the sea floor right you know 
uh, you know uh, microplastics microfibers you know they are also kind of you know, like getting littered everywhere you know marine animals are feeding on them right they are ingesting it right and in turn you know like they are getting uh, impacted you know because of that and in many cases it is found now that it has uh, entering into the food chain right and uh, it is coming even to the like a uh, humans you know since uh, you know like a fish is one of the most consumed you know like a uh, uh, you know like item you know so if you see like uh, what we are you know like a disturbing like how we are disturbing it's coming back to us right so in a way if you see it's a, it's a cycle okay what we are throwing it's coming back to us in some way right so we need to take care of uh, each and every resource including oceans that's why you know like we are discussing over here and not just oceans you know like any uh, water body whether it is a river you know whether it is uh, you know like a lake somewhere right or maybe finally if it is the oceans right they are all very much important you know even uh, underground you know like aquifers you know like in uh, yesterday's uh, uh, you know like the previous lecture we saw like how the rising sea levels are going to contaminate you know the inland you know like aquifers you know and uh, kind of uh, make them you know like a saline you know unusable right so we need to keep you know all of these balances in check so that it doesn't comes back to us and haunt us right so let's see why do we need it oceans are our planet's life support and regulate the global climate system they are the world's largest ecosystem okay home to nearly a million known species and containing vast untapped potential for scientific discovery yeah as i said you know we do not know you know like a everything about you know like our oceans there is a lot you know yet to be discovered yet to be seen right even in terms of uh, it's uh, like you know like a possibilities where we can exploit it for uh, our use okay that resource you know like a consumption i am talking about but if not resource just to know it as a like you know like a uh, as a as a part of our world you know like what it is you know is just you know simple curiosity you know to know things right uh, our nature itself so you know even from that perspective like what kind of species are there how many are there how you know is their life system how they are surviving you know uh, in uh, such you know like a uh, you know we feel that is as if a, it is an odd you know kind of an like environment to live in but even at the bottom of ocean floor which may be you know like a, a thousands of feet you know like below thousands of you know like a meters below okay uh, there is you know like flourishing life and other you know like life forms you know even in uh, inside the oceans you know there are uh, volcanic you know like instances right volcanoes uh, actually you know like erupt even inside uh, you know like uh, these things and uh, there is a huge you know deposits uh, and emissions of sulfur and you know, other you know like uh, obnoxious you know like uh, compounds even in these you know in hospitable uh, you know like environments with the so much of heat and uh, pressure you know there are uh, you know like a marine uh, life forms which are surviving you know so is in a very unique place you know from uh, the perspective of like knowing it all okay so how in what kind of uh, you know conditions life is possible i think oceans you know uh, give us a lot of clues you know to you know like for our uh, you know understanding oceans and fisheries continue to support the global populations economic social and environmental needs yeah so you know uh, you know from different countries you know our societies are dependent on uh, you know like a seafood right fisheries if you see and majorly that comes from uh, rivers you know lakes and oceans despite the critical importance of conserving oceans decades of irresponsible exploitation have led to an alarming level of degradation current efforts to protect key marine environments and small scale fisheries and to invest in ocean science are most yet meeting the urgent need to safeguard this vast yet fragile resource yeah the drastic reduction in human activity brought about the covid-19 crisis while rooted in tragedy is a chance for oceans to recuperate it also it is also an opportunity to chart a sustainable recovery path that will ensure livelihoods for decades to come in harmony with the natural environment so if you see uh, well covid 19 was definitely an uh, unfortunate you know incident in the human history but since you know uh, a majority of the human activities you know came to a halt you know a sudden halt you know nature 
you know uh, got a, uh, a nice break you know you can see you can say to you know recuperate you know to uh, heal you know itself kind of you know like that thing so human activity kind of stopped uh, you know for a while in oceans also and that gave a uh, you know like a small brief time you know for oceans to uh, recover you know from the constant you know like exploitation and uh, you know like uh, exertions you know which uh, human society actually puts in but yeah that was a short life you know like a thing again you know we are back to the you know like a normal and uh, again yeah regular exploitation is uh, ha has started like everywhere okay but you know it is important to witness that that uh, brief moment actually gave us a clue that nature's own healing capacity actually works and given a chance you know it can heal itself okay it can go back to its uh, like an you know, original natural you know like a state of uh, you know like a fair state of like a conditions okay so why not give this chance you know purposefully because we also want you know like uh, our uh, you know like a natural you know like a, uh, elements and systems you know to uh, to work stable you know to be in a, you know at a, you know like a uh, you know run at comfortable you know like a place and their own natural you know like a play, uh, pace and all right so why not do this you know like a purposefully right to allow them a breathing you know like a space allow them a recovery phase you know so that you know they can heal you know on their own so yeah that is the point you know uh, of discussion over here. so what is the problem in this whole thing if you see the ocean you know absorbs around 23 percent of annual co2 emissions generated by human activity okay so you know close to a quarter and helps mitigate the impacts of climate change the ocean has also absorbed more than 90 percent of the excess heat in the climate systems so you see not just you know like uh, the the things what we discussed you know oceans are actually heat absorbers also right so you can see it as a like oceans are the cushions you know they are, they are the buffer zones you know which are you know like allowing you know our atmosphere to not you know get heated so much but yeah if they are getting heated you know again there may be you know like some uh, problem you know arising in oceans itself okay it's not that they they won't change you know after so much of heat absorption right if it is going to you know happen in an excessive rate you know definitely there may be you know like uh, some uh, issues right like you may be knowing you know if the rising temperatures you know it, it might uh, prove you know uncomfortable to the you know creatures over there or maybe you know like other things okay maybe you know rise in the you know like a uh, you know, like salinity or anything else right so all of those things ocean heat is at record levels causing widespread marine heat waves yeah so you see this threatening its rich ecosystems and killing coral reef around the world yeah. so one of the major uh, you know like impacts of this is the loss of you know like a coral reefs corals uh, you may be aware of you know these are you know like a organic uh, you know like a living beings you know which uh, usually you know like occur you know in the you know like ocean you know like a sea seabeds okay and they actually form a huge you know like a colonies if you google you know so you will see the largest you know like a coral reef you know exist in the you know like a great barrier reef of uh, you know like australia i think next to the australian uh, coast right and there are several you know like other uh, reef you know reefs you know present ar around the world they harbor you know like a you know a, a huge number of you know like other living beings you know like including fish right and crabs right and all of those things you know there are several you know like thousands and you know like millions of uh, you know like a species actually thrive in the you know vicinity of uh, these you know like a corals okay if you search the uh, videos on youtube on uh, ngc and uh, discovery or other you know like a channels you will see very interesting you know like a living you know like a places sometimes when we go uh, scuba diving and uh, you know like a uh, underwater you know like a uh, swimming and all okay who wouldn't like uh, you know like a nice you know like a clean environment you know with lot of you know like a species you know floating and uh, you know like a roaming around okay but <clears throat> this rise in temperatures is putting a threat to you know like this whole uh, you know like a coral reefs and if coral reefs are gone if if they are damaged okay if they go like a dead okay all of those you know like other uh, supporting life forms you know they are also going to like a simply die right so it will be a huge disaster you know which will be not be witnessing you know directly because it is living under water but yes in, occasionally if you visit you know like some places so you can still notice you know uh, the changes which have you know like a 
uh, occurred in the last few decades and uh, you know like half a century right so such uh, actually studies and uh, case studies actually you know inform us about uh, you know this uh, uh, devastation you know which is taking place because of the human activity increasing levels of debris in the world's ocean are also having a major environmental and economic impact every year an estimated 5 to 12 million metric tons of plastic enter the ocean you see this number 5 to 12 million metric tons you know costing roughly 13 billion us dollars per year including cleanup costs and financial losses in fisheries and other industries about 89% of plastic litter found on the ocean floor are single use items like plastic bags yeah you see why you know like a single use plastics are uh, you know are getting discouraged you know from uh, uses is for these reasons because you know their actual uses you know like a period you know time is very short okay but they remain in the ecosystem for a long long time you know some cases hundreds of years some cases thousands of years also well that is definitely not what we desire because if it gets deposited at such a rate you know soon all of these oceans and water bodies you know rivers lakes you know they are going to get filled up with uh, uh, you know like all of these uh, you know like a waste and subsequently you know the marine life you know uh, its existence is also threatened okay they all they will also end up you know like a dying right so such a catastrophic uh, you know like a situation yeah about 80 percent of all tourism takes place in coastal areas the ocean related tourism industry grows an estimated 134 billion us dollars per year and in some countries the industry already supports over a third of the labor force Unless carefully managed, tourism can pose a major threat to the natural resources on which it depends and to local culture and industry. Yeah. So, well, tourism is nice, you know, like a going, you know, like a places and seeing them, right? But now in the later, uh, you know, like a years, it has become an industry in itself, right? And with the over, you know, activity of, uh, you know, like a tourism, there is an impact you know directly coming from this industry on the natural resources on the natural elements okay like beaches if you go they are overcrowded right they are always in pressure you know uh, if you go to like you know like any other like a you know a place in mountains right now those places are also you know uh, very much uh, you know uh, under you know like a pressure right and those kind of situations so well definitely that is not uh, you know like what we uh, desire right so that's the thing unless carefully managed tourism can pose a major threat to natural resources yeah so it is posing uh, you know like a threat to the natural resources and uh, yeah now it, it is threatening the ecological whole you know like a uh, imbalance right so that is uh, not uh, you know like a something what uh, anyone would desire because if uh, that ecosystem actually breaks you know the tourism itself is going to get uh, kind of like a you know like uh, destroyed you know that the whole thing you know from that place plus that uh, actually decision is going to you know hinder will the culture you know of that local place and the whole industry which are you know other supporting industries which are dependent on that how is the ocean connected to our health the health of the ocean is intimately tied to our health according to unesco the ocean can be an ally against COVID-19 bacteria found in the depths of the ocean are used to carry out rapid testing to detect the presence of COVID-19. And the diversity of species found in the ocean offers great promise for pharmaceuticals. Several applications, if you see even in pharmaceuticals, you know, even for uh, taking clues for the COVID-19 and other, you know, like a such a, you know, like a, a pandemic or disease or viruses and bacteria which might, uh, you know, like a come and haunt like you know like our human society right so yeah unesco you know like has conducted you know, like a such you know like a uh, analysis and their results you know like is in front of us furthermore marine fisheries provide 57 million jobs globally and provide the primary source of protein for oh, to over 50 percent of population in least developed countries yeah so if you see even for the you know like well-being of the human society and feeding them you know a huge you know like a percentage of people you know depend on you know like a fish related uh, you know like items so you see primary source of protein to over 50 percent of the populations okay 
so more than half of the population from low developed countries because this is where this is the place where you know there is a you know like a scarcity you know like there is the more need of resources even like you know, like a food right the most basic you know like a requirement most basic need of you know like anyone okay so there also like more than 50 percent people you know depend you know on uh, ocean you know uh, related uh, like a seafood you know items you know for you know like their uh, protein and other you know like uh, requirements so it's, it's such a you know like an important source if that source actually gets threatened you know directly you know like the you know like that that section of uh, society actually gets threatened well what can be done for open uh, for open ocean and deep sea areas sustainability can be achieved only through increased international cooperation to protect vulnerable habitats establishing comprehensive effective and equitably managed systems of government protected areas should be pursued to conserve biodiversity and ensure a sustainable future for fishing industry on a local level we should make ocean friendly choices when buying products or eating food derived from oceans and consume only what we need yeah one should not go for over consumerism and one should actually care you know for what you know like they are eating and from which source this has been like you know like procured and uh, received selecting certified products is a good place to start yeah so you know like a, a responsible you know like a consumerism is an important factor over here so not just you know because of their uh, you know like impact on environment and other things and you know, how it is sourced you know is also an equal matter of concern you know from sustainability point of view right so a managed you know like a sea resource is definitely should be promoted compared to a non managed one okay so one should be very selective and choosy while you know like buying the product whether it is coming from a managed you know like a resource you know in a responsible way or it is a, you know like a, it is sourced you know like a, from somewhere you know in an irresponsible way we should eliminate plastic usage as much as possible and organize beach cleanups most importantly we can spread the message about how important marine life is and why we need to protect it okay more details can refer here yeah so let's see some goals so conserve and sustainably use the oceans seas and marine resources for sustainable development by 2020 sustainably managed and sustainably managed and protect marine and coastal ecosystems to avoid significant adverse impacts by 2025 prevent and significantly reduce marine pollution of all kinds okay so we saw like as per some studies you know in, in just few years back you know like number of uh, like you know like a plastic you know like items you know like a thrown in the you know like oceans you know is uh, in the ratio of 1 to 5 you know like a marine you know like a animal marine life okay which is increasing very fast and it is estimated by by 2050 you know that percentage is going to be 1 uh, is to 1 you know so so much of uh, you know like a, uh, you know like a pollution in volumes you know it is it is it is reaching you know to the ocean you know so that needs to be you know like uh, checked at all cost and that is what uh, you know precisely this target actually talks about by 2020 effectively regulate harvesting and end overfishing illegal unreported and unregulated fishing provide access for small scale artisanal fishers to marine re uh, resources and markets by 2020 conserve at least 10% of coastal and marine areas okay conservation by 2020 prohibit certain forms of fisheries subsidies which contribute to over capacity and overfishing yeah so the rate at which you know like these resources can uh, actually come like you know the the the, the fish you know like a uh, 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 you know fish you know like a Uh, it is kind of a giving birth to the new generation then again new generation then again new generation so if you kill you know all of them okay what is going to like how is the new generation going to come up is the, you know like a one of the you know, like a major question of uh, about you know, like overfishing okay so if you do not allow fish to 
well, like remain there and grow naturally okay that whole place is going to get uh, you know exhausted of the you know like that species particular species okay and that again will pose a problem not just there will be like scarcity of the you know, resource but you know what happens to the ecosystem of that place you know which is you know like underwater you know if there is no fish you know all other you know like a life forms which are you know like a part of you know, like their internal food chain you know will also get destroyed right increase scientific knowledge develop research capacity and transfer marine technology taking into account intergovernmental oceanographic commission guidelines okay so help each other share you know like these technologies and uh, let everyone be part of uh, you know like uh, such exercises minimize and address the impact of ocean acidification including through scientific cooperation at all levels yeah so this is also one of the uh, major you know like a challenges with it which is threatening you know all the species because you know the ph level at which uh, you know like a uh, saline water actually has uh, remained for such a long time is now gradually changing right so that change is definitely going to you know hinder with the you know like a life form because they are accustomed to this ph and if it is changing you know they may or may not able be you know like a cope up you know like a so fast you know like a such a fast change right so this may actually prove you know like a fatal to the entire species by 2030 increase economic benefits to small islands developing states and least developed countries from the sustainable use of marine resources lastly enhance the conservation and sustainable use of oceans and their resources by implementing international laws as related as reflected in un clause okay so there are you know like a frameworks you know and uh, mechanisms in place you know so that uh, you know like uh, uh, you know these conservation efforts and you know like other sustainable practices and implementation policies you know etc can be actually you know uh, driven you know like a down uh, you know that frameworks right so these uh, should be you know like a followed by more and more you know like a countries and member states so <clears throat> related to water quality issues in the environment so what can go wrong and how if you see and how our you know like uh, sdgs are you know like related to this so let's see you know like this chart antibiotics and antimicrobials and resistant organisms so you may be knowing you know these uh, medicines antibiotics and uh, antimicrobials you know their usage has risen you know like a several fold in the recent you know years and decades and uh, eventually those compounds you know after you know like it gets excreted from our body actually they reach to the you know like a, a sewer line and from sewer line you know they go to the soil or you know maybe some water body okay and eventually they land up in the uh, bigger you know like a water bodies like lakes rivers and uh, oceans okay and there you know it doesn't ends the like uh, the story doesn't ends there you know uh, the other microbial and other aquatic you know like animals you know life forms they actually you know uh, absorb you know like these chemicals right and then it becomes you know, like a problematic you know, like a thing for that because they are not uh, uh, actually supposed to you know, like have uh, you know, like exposure of you know like such chemicals plus even microbial life okay they, they if they are uh, continuously getting you know like a such doses of uh, you know like these uh, these medicines okay they are developing their own resistance you know like even bacteria and viruses etc and they are getting you know like more fatal okay so you, you may have heard of you know like a super bugs and all right so that is the you know like a, a category of uh, you know like a microbial life forms you know which are becoming resistant to such you know like a compound such medicines okay and uh, if somebody actually contracts you know like uh, that uh, super bug it will be very difficult to treat you know like uh, this uh, super bug because it is already already resistant you know to that drug okay which is meant for you know like uh, treating it okay so what happens in that case so there's a very you know dilemmatic situation like how to go about you know like uh, uh, the consumption of uh, you know like these medicines also right so from here if you see it poses risk to health you know and then risk directly to our you know like a good health and well being okay 
and then again if you see then like now we are you know for good health and well-being we are using you know, like antibiotics again you know like this is going into the run of water and again it is reaching to this thing so this is the cycle you know which is happening you know like right now in this uh, you know like a loop if you see okay so the more the use is you know greater the potential greater the rate at which you know like this will be absorbed by these life forms and uh, you know very soon you know there will be many of them will be resistant and it will be very difficult for us to you know like a catch up right another uh, you know related to this one salinity uh, population uh, pollution if you see okay so this has direct impact on irrigated uh, like irrigation you know agriculture right and uh, which is directly actually related to the you know, goal to that is zero hunger you know poverty also right and uh, from here again like it is dependent uh, on uh, you know, livestock you know like cattle and other you know like animals which are part of uh, you know like a domestic uh, you know like life or uh, agricultural practices and all okay they also sometime use uh, you know like uh, uh, such medicines uh, like you may be aware of uh, you know, like diclofenac uh, you know like one compound okay uh, which was uh, actually you know used Uh, as a you know like a pain reliever in the animals and you know some treat some other you know like health conditions also <coughs> and there was a time when uh, this uh, actually compound this medicine was used you know like en masse you know and when these animals actually died you know vultures you know like a fed on them and that medicine actually proved you know very much fatal to those you know like a vultures and almost 99% of you know like vultures you know from indian subcontinent and you know other countries also they simply you know like died you know like they vanished you know almost vanished okay now there are you know like a very uh, you know few number of you know like vultures you know like are left you know like living in uh, you know like remote areas otherwise from the you know like other uh, you know like rural and other you know like town areas actually this population has uh, uh, is almost you know like completely gone right so that's the direct you know like a uh, use of in you know, like a one compound so the moment it was brought to notice actually this uh, consumption was actually restricted okay and uh, restoration uh, of uh, you know like a vulture species is uh, a kind of you know, getting promoted right so there are several initiatives going on to you know like uh, bring them back you know but it's still you know like it has not uh, uh, kind of succeeded in its goal yet okay so such a catastrophe you know like we are talking about what can you know like happen you know after uh, you know like a mindless use of you know like a medicines and chemical compounds and you know like a stuff okay from here again uh, yeah rain dependence you know like monsoon you know like a natural you know water cycles dependence and uh, fertilizer and other inputs you know like a nutrient uh, you know like runoff from this right and then either uh, like an excess of nutrients or maybe not a total loss of nutrient right both of situations are possible okay if water is uh, you know like a runoff thing is not managed pro- you know like a properly and then again from here you can see like the, these two arrows you know which talks about you know coastal eutrophication and uh, hypo- uh, hypoxic zones you know where uh, you know like a, there may be you know like a lack of oxygen or maybe excess of you know like maybe you know like a co2 or maybe other kind of you know, like a things right so bringing you know like imbalance of some something right some sort okay even excess is also not good even scarcity is also not good right so that balance is very much you know like uh, essential you know maintaining you know that sweet spot you know like uh, for uh, uh, balanced you know like a life you know like a sustenance which poses to you know like a risk to marine ecosystem and then again direct impact on you know, like sdg 14 okay life below water the other repercussion fresh water eutrophication you know risk to risk to fresh water ecosystem and life on land so this can happen at the in the water bodies on the land surface also like rivers lakes and you know, all the underground aquifers and the life forms which are living on land will directly get impacted then you know like another uh, this thing you can see from other you know like water pollutants you know what can happen ki conventional waste water treatments you know energy requirements then it uh, is directly related to affordable clean energy you know bioenergy production from this one bioenergy crops again uh, that is you know like will lead to agriculture wala you know like this portion on this side in the middle okay responsible consumption you know from here you know reduced chemical waste water which is you know directly connected to water pollution and so on 
so it's a kind of a, you can you know like inter relationship you know like that uh, uh, causal map kind of you know like a, a thing right which gives you you know a picture of uh, you know important stakeholders and uh, you know their interconnectedness right how they are uh, you know like uh, uh, interconnected how they are interacting with each other okay what relationship you know like they share with each other you know like one impacts the another then that impacts two, two more things and, and so on right so that interrelationship we can understand it's, uh, nothing stands in isolation if you see any of these uh, you know like uh, stakeholders uh, nodes you know like uh, uh, mentioned here they are not sitting in isolation right they are interrelated so if something goes wrong with one okay there will be repercussion of you know like several degrees you know like later in the you know like the overall chain right so that's one important part to explain here yeah so some uh, global hotspots you can see of water crisis identified by uh, identified by ihs you know painter hey survey across water you know scientists and experts the figure shows the social technical and hydrological factors identified by the respondents as main drivers of the six type of water crisis around the world you know international association of hydrological sciences so what are those six types of you know like a water crisis you know so you can see over here ecological degradation shown by green increase uh, increasing uh, flood risk by blue water conflict by red you know like uh, this uh, water quality calamity by this uh, brown and increasing uh, drought severity by this yellow and the ground water depletion by this light blue so you can see uh, the you know like different hot spots yeah water quality calamity you can see in this uh, gangetic you know like a plain and ecological degradation here again also i think that also in the gangetic plain in deccan we see you know like these light blue ground water depletion you know the water table is you know is, is going down very fast in sri lanka also is the same situation and in the coastal uh, you know like eastern coast of india in the southern india i think tamil nadu and uh, you know andhra pradesh right and these places i also we see water quality calamity right so that's the indian situation in northeast india we see increase uh, flood risk right you see this dark blue and rest of the world if you see in uh, china there are many greens that means ecological degradation is happening so much of pollution etc and a water conflict here it's it looks like there is one red and there are few reds here in the middle east you know and the northeastern africa and uh, in the us also there is water conflict in two places in uh, you know uh, latin america also in chile also i see one spot okay in china it is also there at two, uh, two three locations increasing drought severity if you see yellow this is there in the southern australia several parts of uh, you know like africa including brazil you know that amazon area is really surprising you know uh, that the water scarcity water severity in uh, in the middle of uh, you know like amazon forest right and uh, yeah west coast of us and uh, yeah southern europe you know in many locations you know yeah and so on increased flood risk in the new orleans i think region here on this side also you know europe also a few instances indonesia few in africa okay so yeah so uh, if you see the the direct relationship between you know increased human population you know growing uh, water demand per capita and ineffective water use restrictions you know for ecological degradation then for the blue increased flood risk human population growing water demand per capita and increased hydroclimatic variability for these you know like reds water conflict increased human population decreasing ground water table presence of planning of large dams you know so dams are uh, actually you know a good source of uh, electricity power generation but they have their own uh, ecological you know impacts also you know they end up uh, storing a huge volume of water you know behind the dam okay and uh, depriving you know like river of its water you know downstream plus it uh, kind of accumulates a huge you know like a bulk of you know like a mass right destabilizing the you know like a tectonic you know like a uh, plates plus you know like uh, it may kind of inundate you know like hundreds and thousands of uh, you know like villages and towns also in its catchment area right 
so you know like a number of things but plus it brings uh, you know like a complete halt to the natural you know like a flow of water you know in the river right it, it it's almost uh, kind of a divides the you know like river into different segments okay and uh, naturally river is not designed like you know like uh, to live in segments right so uh, slowly it, it starts you know killing the river itself right so that's one of the you know, like a worst you know like a, a form of uh, you know like a, a power generation you know sometimes it is uh, referred as good solution but uh, if you study the you know like a, the after effects of uh, you know, like a hydroelectric uh, you know like these power plants okay they have huge consequences you know on the environmental uh, you know like aspects right so i suppose uh, in you know like uh, water dams you know must be discouraged uh, then we have these three browns you know ineffective water use restrictions economic growth and others then uh, yellow for drought severity there is you know increased hydroclimatic variability you know directly uh, related to that and for ground water uh, you know uh, depletion you know ineffective water use restriction you know increasing human uh, population also i think is responsible this hydroclimatic variability then uh, economic growth you know widespread access to ground water etc etc so this is a scenario you can uh, you know like briefly see well these uh, represent you know like a major events you know like happening in these locations across the world but there may be you know like a more and more you know like a smaller scale issues you know like going on at uh, various you know like a places which also needs you know like our attention yeah so overview of socio hydrological phenomena and implications of understanding socio hydrological phenomena of iwrm so through this uh, you can understand you know this uh, column represents uh, general phenomena main characteristics of uh, those sub phenomena and implications you know for iwrm so safe sustainable paradox you know you can refer from here main characteristic protection measures generate a false sense of security that reduces coping capabilities thereby increasing social vulnerability you know and uh, focus on reducing social vulnerability better communication of water related risk proper quantification you know enhanced integration of hard and soft path measures focus on reducing demand rather than increasing supply etc etc so maybe you can go through this in detail and for more information maybe you can search you know for this term yeah so again uh, socio hydrological phenomena you know related to you know like some of these uh, sdgs okay so no poverty directly related good health you know of course uh, life uh, you know like clean water and sanitation and uh, then decent work you know like infrastructure city development climate action and life on land on the left side you know there are uh, you know like these uh, phenomena safe development paradox supply chain supply demand cycle adaptation effect pendulum swing rebound effect aggregation effect institutional complexity okay all of these if you hear uh, if you see in this uh, poverty you know, like a no poverty sdg okay it is there so if you see water plays a key role in several specific targets of the sdgs which are interconnected with socio hydrological phenomena the sdgs thus provide further motivation and the necessity to broaden the scope and strengthen the foundation of socio hydrology which requires integration of hydrological and social science perspective right in good health it touches here and uh, yeah reduced deaths and uh, illness you know pendulum swing similarly in the clean water there are many which are uh, like getting actually you know like a touched then here okay then in city infrastructure also we have four then climate action you know we have five and then life on land there are four yeah so again uh, to elaborate on that the examples of socio hydrological models as hypothesis about the feedback mechanism generating one or more phenomena generic conceptualization of human flood interaction and coupled human water dynamics in uh, mamman bigi you know like a river basin you know so this is from uh, this researcher maybe you can refer for more details so see how they have uh, you know like a made this diagram this causal map you know we have discussed earlier you know population p then irrigated area per capita hydrology ecology environmental awareness you know 
and total irrigated area. So see ecology, ecological awareness, attractiveness, population, irrigated uh, area per capita that leads to gross uh, you know like a basin product technology crop water demand crop yield then again it goes back to that irrigated area total irrigated area is in, irrigated area is in the middle which is directly connected to hydrology you know uh, per capita you know like irrigation population right and all of this so yeah how it uh, kind of you know, impacts of so flooding levees wealth distance memory right so you can see this plus and minus you know like a relationships where it uh, kind of aids and uh, where it kind of you know, like a creates you know like a summa a negative situation another uh, you know uh, on that scale you know uh, this is an interesting uh, you know like a, a table which talks about temporal and spatial scales in hydrological processes okay so you can see this is the length scale 10 to the power 0 that means 10 meter and 10 to the power 2, 10 to the power 4, 10 to the power 6 meter and then on this side we have a 1 minute, 1 hour, 1 day, 1 month, 1 year, 100 years you know like a time scale. So on what you know like a time scale and on what length you know do you call water bodies you know what name what names do you give and how, what kind of forms you know like they take you know. So from uh, if you see here infiltration excess over uh, overland you know, like a land flow like you know some if some rain actually happened okay so you observe you know like a running water right so in, in this length actually it can take place and uh, further to that it becomes uh, like you know like a cumulus convection then it becomes thunderstorm right uh, if it, it lasts like this then uh, square lines fronts then uh, if it goes uh, you know for uh, you know like a longer length and you know a longer even like a time duration like world one day or something you know it becomes a channel flow then we have subsurface you know storm flow uh, in, in, in this range you know from one hour you know to one month you know and in the length of uh, like you know like a, uh, maybe 50 meters you know to maybe 10 to the power 4 meters 10 kilometers or so right and then we have unsaturated flow ground water here you know one year at least you know like a I know like a level should be maintained and at the scale of you know like a length of you know like a this 10 to the power 2 a little more sand aquifers you know even 10 to the power 4 silt aquifers you know 10 to the power 2 and plus in that region and then annual rainfall if you see this is this you know like a pattern you know which is drawn over here you know this is the length uh, you know like uh, in, in which it can take place and you know like a cycle of one year. If it goes above that, you know, then it becomes a silt uh, aquifer and sand aquifers, gravel aquifers, you know, living for you know, like a longer period of time, like in a scale of 100 years or more, right. So this is that, uh, you know, like a chart. Yeah, and uh, how do you call, you know, like a, you know, like a culture, society and all of that. So the number of people on this scale, 10 to the power 0, like 10 to 10 to the power 10. And uh, yeah, duration on this side, one day, one month, one year, 10 year, 100 year, 1000 years. So if it is a small, you know, like a group of people, you know, and lasting, uh, these decision things are lasting, you know, maybe a over, uh, over a month or less than a year, it will be a small group or individual decisions. One year and uh, yeah, number of uh, people participating, you know, more than 10 to the power 2, okay, policy contract. It becomes law if it is there for you know like over 10 years you know like a period with uh, you know like a 10 to the power 4 and more you know like a people participating up to the 10 to the power 6 okay. Then it becomes constitution you know it, if it lasts for even more than that like 100 years on that time scale with more number of uh, you know, people following 10 to the power 8 and if it goes beyond that also then becomes a uh, culture you know like uh, you know spanning up to 1000 years you know on time span and uh, yeah people you know becoming you know part up to the 10 to the power 8 and even more 